What I'm about to find on the inside of this Cadillac Escalade is dirty, dangerous, and very likely illegal. I've heard about tricks like this on prior accident cars, but I've never actually seen it in real life, until now. We bought this really nice, low mileage, loaded up Escalade at a dealer wholesale auction in the as-is sale, which are the cars that have some sort of notable flaw and get sold at a pretty big discount. This car was marked with inoperable parking sensors, which we got working with a $150 wiring harness replacement. While we ended up discovering its front bumper was replaced, it didn't seem to have any major frame or structural damage that would indicate a really huge cover-up job, but there are still a bunch of warnings that pop up on the dashboard regarding the car's safety systems, and its steering wheel controls are completely dead. These little nags are indicative of something greater. It's clear this car was in an accident and improperly repaired. And while we haven't found the main cause of all our electrical issues, we need to continue on the same path to find out exactly where the source of our remaining gremlins are. Now it's been a while since I bought a crash car and put it back together. And even though this car doesn't look crashed, it's time to start imagining it that way and treat it as such. Out of all the very few but unique diagnostic trouble codes this car generated, there's one I've never seen before. And it's for a left seatbelt motor module failure. Now this code is particularly strange because your seatbelts run off the same system as your airbags. It's the SRS or the supplemental restraint system. When you have a problem with any of these components, you get that airbag warning light on your dashboard. Something this Escalade has never had since I've had it. So while we obviously have to figure out why this is the case, what I think is super impressive is the fact that this car's electrical system can sense the failure in one single piece of hardware in an entire component. In this case, the seat now, I'm sure you're aware that in a severe enough accident, your airbags will deploy. But did you know that in all modern cars, your seatbelts also have one-time use safety pretensioners that react to keep you from flying out of your seat? In most of the salvage cars I fixed up, it was necessary to remove my seatbelt assemblies and get them repaired, as after the accident, the seatbelts were completely locked up. So naturally, the next area in this Escalade we need to inspect is the front left seatbelt. Now, to this point, our repairs really haven't been all that difficult. It's just interesting, the slew of small repairs we've done performed by a vast variety variety of tools. So far we've had to use our lift, a diagnostic code scanner, multimeter charging system tester, hot stapler, and multiple hand tools from my shed, workshop, and barn to get down to the bottom of this mystery. Needless to say, it hasn't been very straightforward. If only fixing this Escalade was as efficient as using ClickUp, which combines the versatility of multiple productivity tools in just one app. You can build a schedule, establish your workflow, keep track of tasks, and create multiple types of documents, and that's really just scratching the surface. Whether you need to keep track of you or a team of two, 20, or 200, ClickUp has the solutions for your personal and work life with an ultimately customizable interface. And when we start a new project around here, I create a fresh task list to keep me on top of what needs to be finished, and I can share it with Sage to keep productivity on track. One of my favorite parts about ClickUp is just how simple it is to use. They've made this so intuitive that there's very little learning curve to it. Now, all you have to do to start using it for yourself is hit that link down in the description. When you do, you can use code SAMCRACK to get you a 15% off their massive unlimited plan. That'll end up costing you less than five bucks a month. There's also an option to try for free. So again, just hit that link in the description box and start streamlining your life today with ClickUp. This is like a throwback to one of my old salvage rebuild videos. We've removed a countless amount of seat belts and they're pretty simple. You start high, go low down the pillar, and then they're held in usually with a bolt up here, bolt down there, maybe some guides in the middle. Now, anytime you're removing these pillars, I'm not removing a pillar. Look at this. Some funny gaps here. Somebody's already been in here. Uh, you just look for all the different trim pieces in the pillar before you start prying. They usually just pop right off, but you wanna be careful because you don't wanna break anything. So you see on the back here, we've got this handle, and where the handle is, we've got these little cover pieces here, here. Look inside, you'll find bolts. We'll pop these off. Let's go ahead and take this down and get our seatbelt out. All right, literally what I took off a couple bolts here and I am seeing something. I know what I'm gonna find. I didn't unravel this piece of tape yet, but I can already see what's going on in the top of it. Someone really messed with this car. Now this is the stuff that makes me really, really mad. Look at what we're gonna find here. I am 98% sure, yep. Someone went and ran a resistor to the airbag wires to shut off, figuring by doing this, it would stop the light on the dashboard and you know what it probably did shut off the light on the dashboard all we saw on this dashboard is that the retractor is not operating so thank god uh this car threw that error but what's likely happened is this seat belt 
has uh, deployed and they went and tampered with it just to get it to move back up and down so we'll go to the auction and now it's toast and on top of it they might have cut the wiring harness down here to install this resistor that is insane now we got to definitely check all the other seat belts because this is not cool now the purpose of this little guy right here is to do probably what you already thought it will do and that's to shut the airbag light off the car and if this car had an airbag light on when it was being sold at auction nobody would have touched it. It's obvious why they did it. But as far as I understand in uh, most if not all the states it's illegal to tamper with the car's airbag system. Now I'm loosely exchanging the word airbag and seatbelt but again it's all part of the same exact system and these resistors will do the same exact things on airbags that they will seat belts it will trick the car into thinking that this component is installed and it won't throw that light on the dashboard it's why we had a code specifically for the retractor in this seat belt but no airbag light on the dash and this is just the first one we found and these seat belts usually have a couple different pretensioners in them of course there should be airbags all throughout the car so now we've got a huge job inspecting everything in this car to make sure that they didn't take things really far and start tampering with the airbags themselves right here is uh, one of the ones that lives under the seat there's actually an explosive in here and when the explosive goes off it takes the coil in here and it pulls it tight and that's what puts that tension on you again in an accident so this has clearly gone off and where this was plugged in well, the wiring harness wasn't even in it so I'm looking all around here I've unclipped this this is one of the major um, SRS component wiring pieces that goes to the seat and there's got to be another taped off resistor somewhere around here I'm looking oh look at this here it is look there you go another piece of tape another resistor what do you guys think the chance of the passenger side be messed with uh happen i mean you would think it would have a code on the dashboard for passenger side but it just said driver's side retractor i will tell you that the trim on this side looks a whole lot better so like this was cracked right here over on the driver's side uh, it doesn't look as messed with but this looks a bit coiled up here remember i was talking about uh there's like a, a piece of wire in there and it just pulls itself really taut and it always bunches this up Ah, there is what we need to see. Now, this is going to be really tough for you guys to see, but in here, but see that little speckle in there? You're going to see it better when we take this piece of trim off. There's nothing plugged in the pretensioner that's sitting right there. I was going to say, this side compared to the other side, I don't see any gaps around the trim here, but yeah, this has definitely been off. It's really, really loose. It's so strange. It's like a shop went, and they started doing an okay job taking it apart, and they said, ah, screw it, send it to auction, and uh, just put it together as shoddy and cheaply as possible. And the crazy thing is, to fix seat belts, they're not that expensive on American cars. And I'll talk about the pricing in a second because I already tried to order the seat belts, but I wasn't able to because these specific seat belts for this car are on national back order. All right, let's see any taped off connectors on this guy. So this one, yep, got it right here. Oh, a little bit of change. That's good. That'll help us pay for our repairs. The crummy thing about this is where these resistors are this is the factory wiring harness. So I'm hoping someone has a solution that I can repair these. Uh, we don't want to be buying all new wiring harnesses all over a couple pigtails that have been clipped off. See, it's not that hard to slip it through there. I don't have a clue why they had to break it on that side. Well, again, it's because they were hacks. All right, so here is our passenger side a pretensioner that's where it would have plugged in and again you can see how it is all coiled up here so here's the seatbelt assemblies here these are known as dual pretensioner seatbelts which just simply means there's two pretensioners per seatbelt the one in the buckle like I said it pulls the buckle inward and then the one near the retractor will lock that retractor up so it keeps you snug into the seat in the case of an accident now someone definitely had these out of the car mess with them because the retractor on both of them I can freely pull them in and out uh, and they're not supposed to do that you probably noticed if you pull on your seatbelt at a certain angle or if you're driving and you pull on it it'll lock up in certain areas and your seat belts are supposed to do that there's a mechanical component to them that keeps them from moving at certain times or certain places and if you look here they broke a hole in the plastic casing on both of these seat belts and so again somebody's really tampered with these things now when I was ordering some parts for this car from the dealership I asked them how much a new seat belt was and the retractor portion is about $250 and then the buckle portions a 
another hundred dollars so 350 for each side someone saved a whopping seven hundred dollars making this car grossly unsafe which is really disappointing but when I tried to order them they said that these parts are on national back order and that basically means that you're not going to get it at least not for a long time now in the past whenever I'd be rebuilding accident damaged cars I'd always send my seatbelts in to get repaired because it is a substantially cheaper option especially on European cars where seatbelt assemblies can eclipse a thousand dollars so I call up the guys over at my airbags and I asked if they would take a closer look at our assemblies here to show us exactly what these crooks did when they tampered with them and they put together a really comprehensive video on not only how they tampered with the seatbelts but also how they repaired them to factory standards. We have noticed that somebody has messed with the pretensioner side right here. It was bad to begin with. They removed little inserts and they have removed every little pretensioner gear that's possible in there for it to lock up. So if you would look at what would replace it with, they removed every safety feature. That's why it was rolling freely. And not only that, but on this side, this is a retractor placement sensor. They removed all the guts. They removed the leveler. Here I have an example of what we're going to replace for you. That little metal thing right there is for the retractor placement sensor. This right here is the tilt for if the car is on a hill, it will lock up. So that was removed. We'll also give you a new sensor here. Really seriously get injured. So that's what we're going to be doing, replacing this for you. There was also some bolts missing in the corner back here. I'm going to add it. The passenger side, which is this, there is a locking mechanism, a timing, and a delay. And there's a delay for if there's like a seat moving, see sideways, but then it only go out like this. See, it locks like this because they took that out, it wasn't locking at all. But now when we put the new one in, it only goes out straight up and down and it'll lock if the car's sideways. This part was blown. You can tell how it's sucked in. They also removed inserts. Uh, this is to match the plug up in your car to fit the puzzle piece. So this is an example of the different inserts that we have. And we're going to give you a new one, nice and stretched out. You see how much longer it is? We're putting on a new retractor. We have the insert in there already. If you can see the difference, sucked in. So you put it on the new one. It's not scrunched up. There's some space down there. This way the airbag, the airbag module senses that there's something there and all the safety features are intact. They literally removed both sides of safety features. The main one is the pretensioner, which was already start, bad to start with. Right here. Locked up. The piston moved. It was supposed to be locked up. This resistor or sensor is inside. It's inside there. So when it's bad, it pushes in. You see it moving? That means it's been blown. This one is good. It's solid. To match your plugs. All right, your other side, the drivers, it, it's the same exact messed up as this one. Just doesn't have this uh, re retractor positioning sensor which is key. Again, I'll take it off and show you. That little metal part, it's, it's sensing where it's at based off the movement and the locking mechanism here. Extra inserts here for, for these areas right here, the two plug-in regions, just in case. I don't know if you're plugging it in or it cracks, we got you on extras. Another thing is I want to say it, this, these things are very dangerous to mess with, so whoever did, 
they were taking a risk because these pyro sensors that are inside are no joke. We have to be, we are licensed through the ATF for this. You need special licensing. So I wouldn't suggest anybody to do this at home. Instead, send it over to my airbags and we'll make sure it's done right. I might not have been nice enough to the people that mess with the seatbelts in this car before. I call them hacks and all sorts of other names. It's very clear they knew exactly what they were doing when they stripped every single safety component out of it. And I want to thank Max over at my airbags for showing us exactly what was going on with our seatbelts and the entire repair process. And at first, before I set these in, I was kind of skeptical that they'd be able to rebuild them because remember, we had a code for the retractor, not the pretensioner. I know that these pretensioners Pensioners can be replaced, but I didn't realize that my airbags has the ability to rebuild most of the components in your seatbelt. And get this, I told you at the dealership if I bought all these different components, it would cost me right around 700 bucks, which I think is fair. But their price to rebuild these seatbelts with new parts costs just $250, a huge cost savings. And if you're doing this on a European car, the cost savings are massive. So if you're rebuilding a car or your current car has a problem in the SRS system, the guys over at my airbags airbags likely have a solution. This is totally not sponsored, but I have been using their services for years. You can go back several years on my very early videos when I was rebuilding crash cars and I have shown how they're very efficient and cost effective when it comes to seatbelt repairs. So I'll drop all their information down in the description box. I want to give them a huge thanks again for that footage, but right now we need to continue on the same path. Remember, we're looking at a car that looks good, but we know it's been crashed in our last major issue has to do with these right here, our steering wheel controls. They're completely dead, they don't light up. And I've checked both of the fuses that pertain to these controls. One is for the lighting, one is for the controls themselves, and they're both in good condition. But if this car was crashed, and the stuff that should have been replaced after a crash, like our seatbelt pretensioners, weren't, well, we're gonna have faults. So what here in the steering wheel area should have been replaced that wasn't after that crash? If you said clock spring, you're thinking along the same lines as me. Now your clock spring is what runs all the electrical connections through your steering wheel. So things like your airbag get powered through the clock spring. Also your buttons, if you have any, and also your horn. Now here's the thing. The horn works in this car, so I'm a little skeptical that this is actually gonna fix our issue, but I figure we have to try it. Unless the buttons themselves have physically failed, I don't know what else would be stopping the functions of them. Now, this is a total gamble, but the part only costs $60, and this is an OEM part straight from the dealership. You can get one for about half that price online. It's a Chinese knockoff, but when it comes to electrical system parts in your car, I highly recommend you go OEM. And it is part of the safety system in our car, since it has the wiring for the airbag. These are relatively simple to install, so let's start tearing it apart and see if we find anything. Anytime you're doing work on a steering wheel, more than likely you're gonna have to take the airbag out of place. So two things you wanna do. Number one, disconnect battery power under the hood. We've already done that. Number two, make sure the steering wheel is dead center. You can put these things on a hair off and you'll have a fun time taking it off and putting it on until you find the dead center again. So now that we've got that done, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is look at where the airbag comes out of place. You'll find that this is the same on a lot of modern cars, but there's these little holes on either side of the steering column. When you push in there with a pick or with a really small screwdriver, it will depress the mount and this will literally come right out of place as I've already done. And then you're gonna wanna take the two pigtails out of here. There it goes. All right, just a few little electrical connectors later, I was able to pull this one out. I've got the new one set with the C-clip installed, so this is fixed in place. This is ready to go. Got a little bit more trim to put back together here, but I'm really anxious to see if this brand new clock spring is the solution to our failed steering wheel buttons. Look at that, there they are. So excited that all it took was this clock spring, which was what, 60, 65 bucks? Super simple, super effective, and now everything works. Diagnosing the issues we've had on this Escalade hasn't been all that straightforward, but repairing it has been, and all of our fixes have been extremely cheap. So I'm thrilled with the price we got it for, but I am still really mad that we found those resistors 
in the seat belts. As a DIYer, there's a ton of different jobs we can accomplish with a set of good instructions and some hand tools, and it'll save us hundreds if not thousands of dollars versus going to the dealership. But when it comes to modern SRS or safety systems inside your cars, these are very electronically advanced systems and ones that are not super well known among every single mechanic. The only way I know a bit about this stuff is that I used to buy a lot of salvage cars and I had a lot of these components repaired or replaced. Now when it comes to this car, if someone didn't mess with the actual retractor portion, likely we wouldn't have any codes on the dashboard and I'd be driving around right now with some resistors installed where there should be seatbelt pretensioners. If you remember, we only had a code for the left side seatbelt even though both sides were compromised. Now I went online and I looked at this car's entire SRS system and it has six airbags. It has a dashboard, a steering wheel airbag, two front seat airbags, and then two curtain airbags. I went in using my scope and just on a visual inspection. I've seen that the curtain airbags are there. If they went and they tore apart the seats, uh, it would have been a total mess them trying to go and uh, stitch them all back together, especially considering the craftsmanship of their current work. So uh, I think that we're all set now and really this car is just in need of a few seatbelt modules. And it's pretty common in mild crashes for your seatbelts to lock up. Uh, in the Audi RS7 I had not a single airbag deployed, but all four seatbelts locked up. It's just how the systems work. We've got a little suspension repair ahead of us, then we'll take this car on a first drive, make sure none of those codes or errors come back, and if we're good, we'll do the final tally. I'll let you know exactly what it costs, and we are on track to save five figures off a wholesale price. I mean, this thing is a home run. If you enjoy builds like this, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, where I've uploaded pictures of the new cars coming to the channel before anything goes live here on YouTube, well, all you gotta do is go right here, hit that link down in the description box. Guys, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching today, and I'll catch you very soon.